crap. Let's bow as we pray. Almighty God, from whom all blessings flow, we thank you for the great citizens gathering today, God, in this great city of Rocky Mountain to discuss the business of our city and this region. May we bring integrity and character and dignity, dignity to our meeting. That when we leave here tonight, God, that the business of our city will be one, God, that will enhance the lives of the totality of our people. We bless you now. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now that's where roll call from uh, City Clerk. Council Member Nye. Here. Blackwell. Joyner. Here. Walker. Here. Dontridge. Here. Bullock. Here. And Miller. Here. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Item number four is the approval of the minutes of the regular scheduled meeting of City Council held uh, February 10th of 2020. Is there any discussion? Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. That's moved by... Uh, Councilman Daltridge, seconded by Councilman Joyner. All, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It passes. Item number five is the consideration of minutes and recommendations from the regular scheduled committee of the whole meeting held on February 10th, 2020. Uh, number one, the Armour Rock Building Reuse Project of uh, Natasha Hampton by consensus. Council authorized the resolution to be placed on the February 24th. 2020 City Council Agenda. Item number two of that meeting was the second quarter of fiscal year 2020 report of revenues and expenditures. Ken Hunter, uh, report, no action. Uh, item three is Alexander Evans, a field operation complex dedication of a Brad Kerr. By consensus, the council approved a meeting moving forward with signs, plaque, and dedication during the time frame suggested and to have information relative to the appearance of the kiosk signs at a later date. And Item four, closed session, which was an attorney-client privilege, economic development matter. Is there any discussion on that? Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. So moved by uh, Councilman Knight. I'm sorry. Second. Second. Second by uh, Mr. Joyner. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, slight sign. Passes. Brings us to item number six, which is the community update uh, by our city manager, Rochelle D. Small Tone. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, my comments today will be somewhat brief, uh, but I think certainly necessary and important for you to hear. First, um, due to inclement weather, the first of the three public meetings concerning the proposed renovations at Bell Park was canceled. There's still time for citizens to give their input at two of the upcoming scheduled meetings, which are being extended by 30 minutes. One meeting will be held on February 27th from 6 o'clock p.m. until 8 o'clock p.m. and another on March 2nd from 10 p.m. until noon. All meetings will be held in the theater lobby at the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences, located at 270 Gate Street in downtown. Just want to make sure that everyone is clear that these meetings are not in any way related to the community conversations regarding the Confederate monument held in 2018 by the city's Human Relations Department. As Battle Park sits on an independent parcel of land separate from the monument, the Battle Park Master Plan is public input meetings that allow citizens to engage in two-way conversations and planning with the city's parks and recreation staff. Once the plan is developed, the city of Rocky Mountain intends to utilize the resulting planning efforts to apply for numerous grants, including federal grants. And for more information, please call 252 972-1151. The city's Parks and Recreation League basketball playoffs have tipped off this evening at the Rocky Mountain Event Center. 
age groups include 8 and under, 10 and under, 12 and under, and 15 and under. Championship games will be played at 6 o'clock p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. Thursday, February the 27th in each age group. We encourage you to come out and support our area youth and coaches who have put a tremendous amount of time and effort into these events. Talk and Draw will also be held this Thursday, February the 27th at 12 o'clock in the Arts Education Building at the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. Participants attending the event will be able to connect with local artists. Admission is free, so bring your lunch and your creativity. The City's Parks and Recreation Department will host its 2020 Job Fair on March 2nd from 10 a.m. until 1 o'clock p.m. in the Booker T. Washington Community Center Gymnasium. Representatives from more than 20 local companies will be on hand to talk with prospective employees. An all-local production of Young Frankenstein will be held during a pair of weekends in March at the Imperial Center. Performances will run March the 6th through the 7th and 13th through the 14th at 7.30 p.m. Matinees will be held at 2 o'clock p.m. on March 8th and 15th. Tickets are $11 for general admission, $9 for seniors and students, and $7 for children 12 and under. Young Frankenstein is a comedy based on the Mel Brooks musical. As I said before at previous council meetings, we encourage you to ensure your household, your neighbor's household, and your community are counted in the 2020 census. The census will determine funding for housing programs, schools, hospitals, economic development, and much more in our community. Your confidential data can be submitted online at 2020census.gov. I believe that the City of Rocky Mount employees are unmatched in their daily commitment to their jobs and the service of our citizens. Therefore, I'm launching a City Manager's Awards program, which will bring to the forefront some of the outstanding work done by City employees. Nominations may be submitted by an employee or citizen online via RockyMountNC.gov, via email to jesse.nunnery at RockyMountNC.gov, and drop boxes at various city facilities. Nominations should include a detailed and accurate account about what makes their nominee outstanding and how that employee exhibits the city's core values. Nomination forms are available at city facilities and in the council chambers during city council meetings. And then finally, it is my <coughs> pleasure to introduce to you and uh, members of the public um, our newest member of our executive leadership team, and that is none other than Cynthia T. Jones, who begins her <coughs> tenure today uh, with us as our newly hired community and business development director. Mrs. Jones brings nearly 20 years of municipal government experience to Rocky Mount and she spent the past four years as the Edgecombe County Planning and Inspections Director. So I'd like to introduce to you our newest director, Mrs. Jones, Cynthia T. Jones. Thank you, Ms. Paul, Tony. Uh, right? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> my I want to make one, one comment to um, the city manager update in reference to the Battle Park uh, master plan. Um, I don't care how we look at it, how we read it, we cannot separate the Confederate monument from the Battle Park. It is part of the original property. There's no barrier separating it. It's time to revisit it. Uh, we have discussed this numerous of times in this city, and we have avoided talking about it and bringing about a resolution. 
So I just want the city manager to know, the council to know, and our citizens to know that we cannot separate the Confederate monument, no matter how ugly the past is or how painful, it is part of the Battle Park. And if we read further back in our history, it was a part of the meal. So let's not get history twisted. Let's be honest and real and deal with the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Knight. For this time, item number six, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Jim Martin to come to the podium and introduce uh, our newest member of our community at uh, Ash Community College. Mayor, members of city council, city manager, city clerk, city attorney, I'm Jim Martin, 116 Cobblestone Court, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and a member of the Board of Trustees of Nash Community College. It's our pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you our new president, the fifth president of Nash Community College, Dr. Lou Honeycutt. But first, before I do that, let me invite you to visit Nash Community College campus. If you haven't been up there in a while, there's a lot of new and exciting things that are going on. And I think you'll be very well surprised and, and see some good things. And not only on Noel Carriage Road, but right up the street here on Hammond Street in the former Rocky Mount High School facility where we have the now City High School, which is the Center for Industry, Technology, and Innovation, which is serving our, our community here in the, uh, within the uh, city limits of Rocky Mount. So please uh, come out and visit us as, as often as you can. As I said, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Honeycutt, and I won't go into his, all of his academic uh, achievements, but just to give you a background of where his uh, experience come from, comes from, he has been on the uh, faculty and or administrative uh, positions in McNeese State University, Southwest Texas State University, Frank Phillips College in Texas, and most recently comes to us from the Griffin campus of the University of Georgia, which serves some 32,000 students each year. We're happy to have Mr. Dr. Honeycutt with us. He's very excited about being here, and uh, he's like a lot of the rest of us here. Uh, he's not from Nash Rocky Mountain, but he got here as soon as he could. And Mayor, you probably ought to go ahead and start your timer, because when this man starts talking about how happy he is to be in Eastern North Carolina, he doesn't know the word stop. It's not his vocabulary. I'm not sure we want to hear the end of that. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm not sure that I can follow that, but I'll, I will definitely try. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you all for, for having me today. I bring you well, warm wishes and greetings from Nash Community College. And let me tell you, I did get here as fast as I could. I am a Texas boy, and well, it's been a long time since I've been a boy, but you know what I mean. But um, my educational journey took me a lot of places, and my father used to refer to me, after I finished my PhD, as having more degrees than a thermometer. And in some aspects he was right, but I said, Dad, it will pay off. And he's up in heaven now looking down on me, but he, he will see that it has paid off. Because one of the greatest things that ever happened to me is a friend of mine from Chicago texted me or sent me an email one day and said, click this link, this is what you've been working for. Well, you never want to click a link from a friend that sends you something at work. So I sent it back and said, what is this? And she said, just click it. So I clicked it, and it was a... a job description and application process for president, fifth president of Nash Community College. So I sent back to her and said, this is so good, why don't you apply for it? And she said, because it's in the country. <laughs> and I like Chicago. And so I clicked on it and looked, and literally within two minutes, I was hooked. And let me assure you, I was satisfied being at the University of Georgia. I was very happy there, I thought I would retire from there, but what I had gotten away from was mission. And my mission in life has always been to change lives and change lives for the positive. And the community college in Texas, I was there for 12 years, that's what we did. University of Georgia offered me great opportunities to learn leadership skills, but we were, really weren't changing lives to the extent the community college system does. So when I saw this opportunity, I went to work doing research. And it was like doing a PhD dissertation because I researched Nash County, Rocky Mount. Nashville, the original Nashville, I had to learn to start saying it that way, and many other aspects of the college because I thought if I'm going to pick up again 
and move. I was in Georgia for four years. This had to be the place to be. Well, I want to tell you, from the time I interviewed, the board <coughs> made me feel at home immediately. Um, at, at one point, they said, we think you may know more about us than we do, because I had studied National Community College very diligently, and this whole area. I am very regionally oriented. I believe what's, the, you know, Nash County funds part of the college budget, but I've got to look beyond Nash County because what's good for the region is good for all of us. And I firmly believe there is an incredible future ahead or I wouldn't be here. I, I see the great history that's here. I see the great present, but I see an incredible future for Nash County, Rocky Mount, Nashville, every one of the surrounding area. One of the things that we have always been focused on and will continue to be is the workforce. And that's where sometimes at the university level I got a little jaded and off, off mission a little bit because we were more ivory tower, get your four-year degree, go on and do something. I firmly believe that we have the potential workforce in Nash County to make us even greater than we are. But we've got to train them. And we've got to convince everyone that not everyone needs a four-year degree. Hmm. Let's give them the skills they need to be successful and get them in the workplace, and more importantly, let's keep them in Nash County. Mm. So we are committed to that. We, our programs, our workforce programs are second to none. One of the highest ranking system officials in this state told me at my first meeting, pulled me aside and said, let me assure you, Nash Community College is the rock of Eastern North Carolina. And I said, if that ever changes, let me know. And we'll, we'll get back on track. We are very well respected, as is this whole county and community. I am very much entrenched. In fact, I started November 1st, and I think I attended about 700,000 events between November 1st and December 25th. It was the perfect time to move to this area, because there's something going on every night at that time, sometimes two and three things. But it really got me engrossed and involved in the community. I'm very committed to that. So. Anything that we can do for, for the city, you got to come talk to me. I'm, we're committed. I can't succeed if y'all don't succeed. And I like to think y'all can't succeed if we don't succeed. We're all in this together. So with that, I would say I'd answer any questions that you might have. Please know that I am thrilled to be here. I tell everybody that, and they ask me where I'm from. I said, well, the college is in Rocky Mount slash Nashville slash Nash County. I talk about everybody at once. So I'll do that continuously. But... Um, we work very closely with Edgecombe Community College. We'll continue to because, again, there's enough to go around. So, again, we're very, uh, Dr. Brown and I both are very regional. So, can I answer any questions for y'all? I know I'm on a time limit here. And, and Jim's right, I talk forever. So, come by, you need to come to my office. Please come to campus. Um, we'll sit and visit and we'll talk about the future of, of Rocky Mountain National Community College. What questions can I answer for y'all? Thank you all very much. No, I'm very happy. Okay, this brings us, brings us to the public uh, comment portion of our city council meeting. Uh, this is the petitions from the public portion, and this is an opportunity for our public to comment, and we thank you for coming to city council to share your views. And we value all citizen input. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the officer prior the opening of petitions for the public, and any comments should be directed to the council as a whole, and not to individual council members or city staff. This is your opportunity to raise a question, present a request to council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the city manager or staff for follow-up. We ask that you speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner, and give your name and address. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and you will be asked to sit down or remove from the meeting. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and you will have three minutes. If an organized group is present, present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comment. If your comments are in regard to an item that is the subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. At this point in time, I would like to call uh, Judge Leon Henderson to the podium. Please state your address for the record if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Leon Henderson, of course. I live at 17 <clears throat> Mockingbird Lane, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. 
I'm a retired lawyer and a former Superior Court judge, and that man is a hard act to follow. <laughs> I have come here today to ask you again to install red light cameras at the intersections that have a high frequency of crashes. On August the 7th, 2017, I wrote to then Councilman Lamont Wiggins expressing my concern about the number of people I have seen running red lights and counting it on the delay to make it through the intersection. Mr. Wiggins arranged, Judge Wiggins now, arranged a meeting with the city manager and assistant city manager, interim police chief <coughs> Lynn Williams himself and I on August the 22nd, 2017. Interest was expressed, but nothing moved forward. On April the 9th, the City Council meeting as a Committee of the Whole received a report from Interim, Council, Interim Assistant City Manager Pete Varney regarding the City's experience with red light cameras dating back to 2002. At the conclusion of this report, the Committee voted unanimously to authorize the staff to move forward with drafting the interlocal agreements with the school system and authorize the city attorney to proceed with obtaining the required legislative authority. Two years have gone by and to the best of my knowledge, nothing has been done. I'm interested in this for the following reasons. Some of my friends have sustained damage and injury at crashes at some of these intersections. We have the technology and we used it before with positive results to reduce the number and severity of crashes at intersections. We are now able to attain the authority we need from the General Assembly to employ this technology and break even, or better, monetarily. Other cities in North Carolina, including Greenville, Raleigh, Charlotte, and Fayetteville, are using this technology. I obtained some crash data from the North Carolina Department of Transportation for the time, for the time period 2004 to 2018 that you might find interesting. During that four year, 2014 to 2018, <coughs> there were 53 crashes at Raleigh Street and Fairview Road. There were 82 crashes at Benvenu Road and Jeffries, 30 crashes at Thomas and Arlington, and 83 crashes at Sunset and Winston. In the interest of public safety, I respectfully ask again that you act. Whoops. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to ask Glenn Wilkins to the podium. Good evening, everyone. Mine is short and sweet. Um, I saw on the um, agenda, too, I stood here last month about my concern about someone serving on the HRC that was not a citizen of Rocky Mount, and I understand that situation is resolved. I want to thank all the individuals involved who talked behind the scenes and um, understand it was nothing personal, but if you're not a city of this, a resident of this city, you shouldn't serve on the committees. So thank you for that. My um, second statement is last October, I stood here in front of you all, most of you all, and expressed concern about the South Rocky Mount Community Center roof. I was told at that time, and public was too, and it was in the telegram, that there were bids out. Well, at the January meeting last month when I inquired, uh, I was told that um, the bids were out, and I said, well, that's what you said last October. I do want to thank Councilman T.J. Walker, I spoke with him after the January meeting and after I had spoken to that person who said the bids were out and it seemed, I don't know if the bids were out or not, but a bid just went out in February. So I thank you, Councilman Walker, for listening to my concern and getting with the city manager and whoever else to get that done. And I noticed on the bid that um, it ended February the 20th. So I would expect we'd have a new roof at South Rocky Mount Community yeah. Center soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, respond to that, please, Mayor. Yes, absolutely. Councilman. 
Uh, Ms. Wilkins, uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, immediately in speaking to Madam Manager, uh, she kept her word, uh, and that's what we have to do as a city, hold each other accountable. She kept her word to me, I kept my word to you. I think that's what forward progress is all about and building trust in this community. So thank you. And thank you, Madam Manager. Then I'll ask uh, General Gordon, uh, Arnold Gordon Bray to the podium. And if you would uh, state your address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, City Manager. I'm going to bring good news, so you go and relax. Uh, sirs, I rise to announce that there is a uh, Christian park being constructed on the east end of Virginia Street. It's called the Alpha and Omega Passions Park. It is sponsored by my church, Immaculate Conception Catholic Church, on church property. And I say that to you because one is, is we're obviously a nonprofit, and so when you go to your taxes, we want to lose that tax base for you, city manager. Take that off, the, off your books. If you are familiar with the passion of Jesus Christ, uh, this is a living replica to remind us of that. It is a 12-foot uh, crucifix with 14 9-foot uh, crosses, each having a uh, symbol that explains what happens at that station. Uh, when the park is fully completed, you will have not just a, a stations of the cross, but you'll also have a rosary for those who practice. And by the way, it's not just Catholics to do that, so. And it's called Alpha and Omega Passions Park for, for those citizens that want to come out there and reflect uh, on their faith uh, in their way. And there, there'll be benches out there. Uh, actual completion for the, the entire park should occur around October. But this Friday, we'll actually have a service at, at uh, stations at 12 o'clock, and then there will be a completion service on Good Friday, we will announce members of the entire diocese to come down for that. We say this because it ought to be one of those things that we remind folks that we are about here in this city. It's progress of facilities, progress of people, progress of industry, and progress of spirit. And in our way, we want to go ahead and share that with the city and the region. Some to your questions. Thank you. It is the extreme east end of Virginia Street. If you, if you try to Google it, you need something, use 1610 or 1661. And for you, it's right across the street from uh, uh, Guy and Davis's house. Exactly. All right. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, I called Gloria Davis to the podium. Give us your address for the record. Greetings to all of you. My name is Gloria Davis, and I'm in the 1812 Lynn Avenue. And I would like to see the enforcement or reinforcement of the 18 pillars that are coming back into our communities, they're parking on lawns that are not an acre, and they're on the streets um, in front of houses and cars that are parked in yards, and they're not hidden behind the house either, they're parked right in the front yard with grass growing up, even with the grass supposed to be dying, the grass is still there, uh, with cars in the yards. And to somehow, I, I don't know um, what happens exactly when someone comes, when animal, animal control comes, and get a dog, um, I, I'm not quite sure what happens, but there are dogs that are loose that are running people, and um, I saw this um, morning when I was out, there, there's a dog that was trying to jump and get some kids that were going to school. So um, I'm glad he didn't get on the fence, I might would have had to stop, and he would have gotten me to I guess, but you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, uh, I'm just concerned about those things. And if we're having um, workers, city workers, 
was supposed to be patrolling or going out inspecting. I'm not, I, I can't understand why they don't see these cars and these 18 footers or I, I just don't understand why they're not seen. And maybe they've done something about I don't know. But those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. I'd like to call to the podium uh, Johnny Cunningham, please. <coughs> John McCartney on 546 Maryville Street, Citizens uh, Council staff. I'm gonna beg and plead today. Stop the bleeding. Nash County and different churches and organizations, nonprofits, are uh, strangling Edge County County. I have been forced to defend myself in a court of law under two fictitious bogus restraint orders because I'm singling out the exploitation of entities coming from Nash County, absorbing all the resources out of Nash County. We are a nonprofit in our community. We've been working in our community for 30 years. For example, a bill was donated during election time. The cost of that bill now has tripled in repairs. Somebody benefited in donating that building. The entity that was in our community and the things that they're teaching our children, just like these Catholic churches moved into our black community. We have Baptist churches, holy and sanctified churches. I don't think I know any black uh, uh, Catholics on Virginia Street. We're not being treated fairly. The resources are being absorbed out of Edgecombe County and they're being taken back to Nash County. I'm begging and pleading that, the, that, that, that this stops. It's unfair for the children, as a matter of fact. The money that's going to be raised to finish the completion of this, uh, this center where peacemakers moved out of, the children were exploited. I call it exploitation. Because the money that's going to take to, to, to bring that building up to par and to convert it to whatever it is going to be converted into, when they moved out of the community where the most need was and moved closer and away from the children that most in need, who's going to benefit? The building is going to absorb the, the resources. The children are being exploited to raise funds for the building. And it's the same thing. We were, our children are being exploited. There was a, there was a group that comes all the way from Zell. They used us, they exploited us, they lied to us, and they carried all the resources and the donations back to Zelda. And we're fighting to get those donations back to Rocky Mountain. It is time that this council took a stance and said, you know what? It is Edgecombe County that suffered, and the children and the people and the citizens in Edgecombe County. Thank you. On Thanksgiving morning, a young man, we worked in that Bassett Center for five years. One of those restraint orders restricted us. And within that time, Thanksgiving morning, a young man came through a window accidentally failed to his death. $5.9 million was allocated for that Bassett Center from Nash County investors. Nash General Hospital invested $300,000 for a chaplain and a nurse that I've never seen go knocking on doors and talk to Penn Street. On, they buried that young man on a Saturday. The following Monday morning, the wife got a call and said that her and her children had to vacate the premises. This bleeding needs to stop. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. I'd like to ask uh, Adrian Copeland to come to the uh, podium. 
it uh, give us your address for the record? Mm -hmm. Hey, Adrian, this is Kelly. Um, I spoke to this council two meetings ago about tax foreclosures, and since then I've done some research and found that the city has done foreclosures in the past. The most recent one I could find was from 1985, although that's a long time ago. This is good news that at one point there was a process in place that could be resumed. Also, Richard J. Rose was the commissioner listed in those proceedings and attorney for the plaintiff, so we've got someone who may remember how things were done. So where do we start? This process is no doubt a daunting one to undertake, so I propose we narrow down the scope to a manageable one to start while forming the process in a way that is scalable to include the entire city once the process works smoothly. As a city, Rocky Mount has already designated the historic districts as worthy of preservation to safeguard the heritage of our city, so it makes sense to start there. There are seven historic districts in Rocky Mount. Four of them are local historic districts, and of those four, Villa Place spans three city wards. It's also my favorite, so I started there. Out of 129 parcels in Villa Place, there are 29 that are delinquent in city taxes. That's 22%. 18 parcels are delinquent on city taxes two years or more. 11 are delinquent six years or more. Four of them are delinquent 10 years or more. There are 15 properties that are under a minimum housing code that's 12%. So together, there are 38 properties delinquent or under code. That is almost 30% of the homes in one neighborhood. I spoke to one property owner who told me that they don't prioritize paying their property taxes because they know that the city doesn't do anything about it and they prefer to pay other things first. It gets worse. There are repeat offenders. Ten of these property owners own a total of 39 other properties in Rocky Mount, which are also delinquent in taxes. Three of them are in the downtown Central City Historic District. Thirteen of them have been delinquent for ten years or more, and I don't know exactly how long because online records stop there. These properties owned by these ten repeat offenders have open bills with the City of Rocky Mount totaling over $84,000. I have copies of this data here for almost all of you. These property owners that are repeat offenders is where we start. You can initiate tax foreclosures or if that is too much trouble, North Carolina now allows for receivership for vacant properties. You can petition a superior court to appoint a receiver to take control of property. The receiver can sell the property or rehabilitate the property and then sell it free from title encumbrances to a new owner. No matter how you do it, the city needs to begin taking these properties back and not allowing the owners to disrespect our city and our citizens any longer. I will continue to research this issue and come up with plans and solutions, and I'm more than willing to meet with any of you or anybody else that wants to discuss it further. I've found a lot of ideas and solutions that could work here. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Excuse me. Yes. Hey. Sorry. Ms. Thomas, I'd like to call Mr. Warren Daltridge to the podium. <laughs> General and a judge and a, and a doctor, uh, but I'll give it a good shot. Mr. Mayor, this is city manager, council members, and fellow citizens. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, thank you for your opportunity. My, your, my opportunity to address you today. I'm Warren Dottridge, and I live at 117 Manchester Court. Many assumed I might be done with my council engagements after, uh, with no basis and no fact and no merit, being excoriated following my previous address, but. It couldn't be further from the truth. I'm now more energized than I have ever been. Mr. Mayor has promised I will keep, I will continue to keep my topics positive and constructive. Those who would take the time to review my message in the past meetings or on Facebook group Love Rocky Mount would find a consistent theme with very little deviation. I'm here due to a deeply rooted desire to make a meaningful, positive impact on my community. My prayer that the work we do will be seen as good for all and that it sets an example for others throughout Rocky Mountain and the surrounding area. For the record, so no one might have to guess what our group is all about, I offer this. President Harry Truman is quoted as saying, I doubt if there is any problem in the world today, social, political, or economic, that would not find a happy solution if approached in the spirit of the Sermon on the Mount. Dr. Martin Luther King famously stated, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. 
hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In my opinion, we have to stop dividing ourselves by the very by, by every way imaginable. Black, white, Hispanic, Edgecombe, Nash, Republican, Democrat, Methodist, Catholic, male, female, gay, straight, or bi, pro-Trump or never Trump. The possibilities for division go on into infinity. Why don't we try to just find out what makes us alike for a little while? Find a common denominator, something, anything, to start a meaningful conversation. Let's find something to love in each other and be light unto our paths. I'll close with a challenge to myself and anyone else that uses this lectern. Please be prepared during your address to not just complain, but also, more importantly, bring recommended solutions ones you are willing to personally act on and join others to help achieve. We far too often lob suggestions or complaints over this podium waiting for someone else to act. Let's get to work together instead. In the last few months, members of my group, Love Rocky Mountain, and I have actively engaged people throughout the community. One group we've not had much success with is this council. If we are to make this city everything it can be, we must do it together. So my recommended action is very simple. Let's work together. Thank you. I call, call up Ms. Menjis. Uh, Mari Menjis, live at 2220 North Wesleyan Boulevard. Um, and I would like to reiterate what Mr. Daughtry said. Love is the common denominator. Um, I was reading a little bit in the paper today about, or it might have been Saturdays, um, about the demolition of houses um, that are obviously sound like they're falling apart since so there's not a whole lot of demolition to go for. But is there all were houses or individual buildings. Does that group have anything to do with businesses that look like they're kind of dilapidated? I would like to also to remind about um, a place called Ebony and Ivory, I believe, on South, is it, no, North, thank you, North Church Street. Um, it still is pretty much an eyesore, and I have to go by it every day, and I'm just thinking new people coming in off 95, if they have to get on Church Street, they're going to think, and, um, and, did anybody come up with an, or thought that was a good idea to have a, a neighborhood anti-litter group like they have when they, um, you know, anti-crime group? Nobody's ever said anything to me about that. And, um, and the update on the street improvement, the money that's going to have to go for that. Anybody thought about that? And of course, Please do not litter. And if you see somebody doing it, take their license plate and the police will send them a little letter. As I know that works. Well, I don't know if it stops them from littering, but anyway, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call up uh, Ms. Uh, Kanye Darden. My name is Kaya Darden. I reside at 1600 Barn Street, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, Ward 1. Greetings to the city manager, mayor, city council, and citizens of Rocky Mountain. <clears throat> Since the last city council meeting, I have received a feedback concerning my comments made about a particular group on Facebook called the Concerned Citizens of Rocky Mountain. Mostly positive, but to whom it may concern, my name is not Tia Darden, it is Kaya Darden. If you're going to quote anything that I say, please make sure that your voice translators are hearing me correctly. I would hate for my words and my name to be misconstrued this time. No matter how you try to downplay my comments concerning this city, I will continue to do my due diligence and speak out for those who don't have enough confidence to come to this podium, whether you like it or not. A comment was made that I am, after all, merely a child as if what I have to say doesn't matter. I am 18 years old, not a child, but a young adult, which my age has nothing to do with being able to understand right from wrong. 
Secondly, I want to point out that there are seven council members in our city. Only two of those names are constantly mentioned as if they were on the board, which we all know who they are, Councilman Blackwell and Councilman Knight. It's a sad case that some of us are so small-minded that we don't want to admit to the bullying taking place. Instead, we bystand and some of us even partake in it. I never knew that adults would stoop to the levels that they do until I've read some of the articles and comments from concerned citizens. Since we want to be so on top of what's legal and illegal, cyberbullying is definitely illegal. I would like to commend Councilman Knight and Blackwell for their integrity and leadership character, continuing to thrive in the midst of all the stones that are being thrown at them. I also want to gladly announce that April 10th, 2020, myself along with some other youth will be hosting our very first annual Easter egg hunt at Lancaster Park in the Hillsdale community. All activities will be open to the public. If anyone would like to be a sponsor or contribute to our event, please feel free to contact me at 252-886-0803 or Archie Jones in the Human Relations Department. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Landria Williams, or Landria Williams, Landia. I get that right. If you could give us your address for the record. My name is Native Councilman and City Manager. My name is Landia Williams, 1824 um, Thomas Trail, Rocky Out. Today, I would like to shine a light on a problem that has been overlooked, a problem that I have experienced for myself, and a problem that Rocky Mount Housing Authorities ignore. If you are not aware, Rocky Mount Armstrong Apartments has a huge bed bug problem. My mother and I moved into Armstrong Apartments in October 2018. As we were moving in, we were notified by neighbors that the family before us had a bed bug problem. As we proceeded to move in, at first, bed bugs were not a problem for us until about March of 2019. As soon as the problem occurred, we notified the office and were put on a waiting list to receive treatment for several months as the problem just kept getting worse. Nobody ever came to treat it, and we notified the office again, and they said there was nothing they could do until we came up on the lease. They were very rude and did not care because they didn't have to live with the problem. Housing authorities can be very strict, telling residents not to smoke within 20 feet of their apartments and no company for more than a week, but they allow infestation of bed bugs. Mm. We noticed all the other apartments all around us were receiving treatment for the same thing. It got so bad, my mother and I had to evacuate the apartment, leave all our furniture and other belongings behind. We were lucky enough to stay with a family friend, but most people aren't that lucky and are still suffering to this day. This is a serious health concern. Those apartments are infested. A neighbor informed us that she's been there for several years and bad blood treatments were a normal thing for her. They always go and come back, she said. She also mentioned that it got so bad in her apartment they traveled to the bathroom and were coming out of the light switch on the walls. I have photos of bed bugs and of bed bug bites. I suggest those apartments be torn down and rebuilt. Thank you very much. <laughs> Camelia Stancy, please come to the podium. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question for Ms. Williams. Okay. Are you referring to the original Armstrong apartments? Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Protocol is already established, so I'm not going through all that. Um, I only signed up to speak on the citizens' comments and televised meetings, but um, throughout the meeting, I, I'm going to add HRC and um, the Confederate Monument. Um, HRC, I stand here proudly as a member of the Rocky Mountain NAACP. I have been a member since 1992, um, and I have served Rocky Mount and Edgecombe County, and outside of Edgecombe County, Nash County, well. So for someone to say that they are being underserved, not this guy, and I do it out of pocket. Also, um, I would challenge anyone, my work that has been done on the HRC, I'm a policy and procedure man, and um, my appointment to the board was, um, they said it had been resolved. They think it was resolved because they came to the meeting. It's been resolved. It just haven't taken place yet, and it will take place soon. However, um, the Confederate Monument, when I spoke on it at the last, uh, last meeting, 
um, the newspaper and um, social media ran with it. That needs to stop. The same people talking about they love Rocky Mountain are the same people that are doing it or allowing it to be done on their sites. People ain't crazy. They got me blocked, so um, people send me stuff. Uh, citizen comments. I am glad um, um, Ms. Rochelle Tony um, spoke to the federal monument thing, and I'm so glad that Andre Knight followed up because that was one of my issues. Like I say, um, they took it and ran with it from my comments. And I appreciate what Andre said because the councilman Knight said because it does go hand in hand. And I served on the Human Rights Commission. We had meetings. We paid someone to come in. And so it's time for the board to react. You want to talk about some talk about the money that was spent to do this, do those meetings. Uh, when it comes to televised meetings, I know people want to see them televised, but I also think you need to do a study and see how effective they are. Um, looking at the meetings and what. I mean, you're going to spend all this money to do what? I think some people come down here just to see themselves on TV. It's crazy. And, and, and you all need to um, address some of this mess that come up here before this council that, that, that makes no sense, that's wasting people's time. Come in and talk about something that makes sense. That young female and a couple more, they had some good comments that you can uh, measure. Some of the other stuff, quote, quotes, we can, we, can, we can quote, we can read that anytime. Uh, I know this is Black History Month, but I serve it throughout the year. So this is somebody else's month, and ain't mine, because I do it year round. But again, back to the televised part, you're talking about spending a lot of money. I want you to check with Nash County, uh, Pitt County, other places to see um, how effective it is. I have to be home sometime. I've been working in Rocky Mountain for 33 Thank years. Thank you, sir. So see how effective it is. If you don't mind, though, if you read your address for the uh, for the Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That'd be great. 127 Midway Lane, Tarbury, North Carolina. I live seven miles out of Tarbury, three miles out of Pine Top. My P.O. Box, my address is P.O. Box 1391 Pine Top. And, and but, but really, my, my, my address is 3475 Wellman Boulevard, where I've been working for 35 years, 33 years, just left work and came here. So I can video this meeting for free. Thank you, Mr. Davis. All right. I'll ask Darlene Spencer Harris to the podium. Darlene Spencer Harris. I reside at 537 Arlington Street, Ward 3, where Councilman Joyner is our councilman. Well, I'm here today to first make a couple acknowledgments on the opening of the newest location of Blanche's Bistro, which is located at 116 Targo Street. I had the um, opportunity to patronize them on their opening and welcome them to downtown historic Rocky Mountain. The other thing that um, that's come to my attention, that as Blanche just came in, Prime House moved out. Prime House will now be located at the Mills, along with Cool Geeks, which was originally downtown as well. Although this is a good investment for their, on their behalf, they must remember where the roots lie. The roots lie in Edgecombe County where they were able to establish their business and to grow their business to allow them to opportunity to move to the mills, which is located in Nash County. So I say that along with the Salvation Army, which was also located in Edgecombe County, Peacemakers, which was also located in Edgecombe County, and so Edgecombe County is used as a starting point. Not a remaining point, but just a starting point. Let me get my feet wet. Let me get some of this water in my soul, and then I can move on to bigger and better things. In the meantime, you're forgetting the people that gave you the opportunity to build your business. But as long as it remains in Rocky Mount, that is still a good thing because it's still benefiting all the residents and the people and the economics here in this great city. So with that, I would say that we need more investments to come on back downtown to fill these voids because now these are voids. These are now voids. These are things that's going to need to be filled. Otherwise, it's just going to be another detapolated building, unoccupied going down, 
another eyesore. Somebody want to foreclose on it. You know, it's not helping the community by these people moving out, although it's growing the whole city as a whole. So, on that note, one thing that I do have a concern about is this poll, this utility poll that fell on the opposite of one of my driveways on Arlington Street. The poll had been in terrible shape for some years now. So I had called about the poll. The poll does not belong to the city of Rocky Mountain. The city is not responsible for that poll. That poll has been laying down now. Oh, almost. Thank you, Thank you. I'd like to ask Ms. Nathlin O'Ree to the podium. You're our final speaker. I'm lucky number 13. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Mayor, City Manager, and City Council and Friends. <coughs> My name is Nathalie O'Ree. <coughs> I live at 1713 Beverly Road. Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I come forward to ask, what is the city's position regarding our schools located in Rocky Mount City? We have a Nash County, a Nash Rocky Mount school system deciding if they will remove Rocky Mount from the Nash Rocky Mount school system name. And soon after, they may join the Nash County Commissioners to try and separate our Rocky Mount schools by county line. Dividing our Rocky Mount City Schools by county line could be damaging for our real estate market, our economy, as well as a disservice to our children. Unchallenged, the school system and Nash County will continue to take money allocated to serve Rocky Mount children and invest it exclusively in new schools in western North Nash County and continue neglecting those in the Rocky Mount inner city. As a city, we should not sit idly by. I would like to see Rocky Mount take a proactive stance to protect our interests and our investment in real estate and children. I do not have the answers. However, I believe we should con contract with advisors and legal representation to identify and move on strategies that best protect and preserve the best interest of our Rocky Mount City Schools, our children, as well as our economic interests. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, could you direct Ms. O'Ree in the right uh, place she needs to go in reference to her question? Uh, Ms. O'Ree and I have had some conversation, but the answer is that this resides with the school board uh, between Nash and Edgecombe County. Nash and Edgecombe, uh, the Nash Rocky Mountain School System and Edgecombe County School System uh, have a local, um, I think it's government, uh, the, policy basically contract that's been worked out and uh, passed by the General Assembly. I believe the number is in 2012 and I can get you that information if you'd like to see it. Yes, I would appreciate any further information and I believe there's also another meeting tomorrow night where the two will be coming together to discuss this further but I do not want Rocky Mount to be out of the knowledge of what's going and what's going on and what's happening because if something comes down and our children who live in the city limits, who live in Edgecombe County, cannot go to the Rocky Mount High School, I'll feel some kind of way. And you know, I think that should be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. It's a meeting going on in Rocky Mount in our top at six o'clock about that. The Edgecombe County Commission and the uh, school board. Six o'clock. Yes, there is a meeting tonight. Six o'clock. Uh, six o'clock. Uh, the Edgecombe County School Board between the commissioners, Edgecombe County Commissioners and Edgecombe County School Board on this very same item. It's in Princeville. It's in Princeville. It's in Princeville. Resource Center. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, may I say something to you? 
Council Barber. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would also just like to remind everyone that it was the Rocky Mountain City Council that took a very aggressive stance on keeping the relationship as it was with the Rocky Mountain, the city of Rocky Mountain, continuing to contribute to Nash Rocky Mountain Schools on behalf of the deficit between the fee for service fee that was charged by the Edgecombe County students. And I would just like to remind everyone that it was the Nash County commissioners who adamantly insisted that the city of Rocky Mountain had no right to contribute to those coffers with the Nash Rocky Mountain schools. I'd also like to remind all of us that while we have a legislation, legislative effort, a bill that has now become law that says that Rocky Mount should not participate in education, the General Assembly passed another law that made it perfectly legal for other cities to participate in school systems. So we do have somewhat of a hypocritical stance that's been taken in our community related to the education of children. From my standpoint, that has minimized what's good for the children, has marginalized what's good for Rocky Mountain, right. and what has centered around <coughs> old line arguments about who should rule what. Hmm. So that's a complex issue, but it's already been discussed. It has not been litigated. It's been discussed and legislated. But I do not feel that we should just sit idly by. I think that Nash County is going to recognize that they're going to lose athletic rankings because they're going to lose students. Hmm. Edgecombe County is going to realize they have facilities that need to be improved. Yep. And while we're doing all this realization after the fact, you got students who are just wanting to learn hmm. and play together and feel like they belong in a city that they've always called home. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Dawson. Um, Madam Manager, I don't know how we follow up with uh, concerns when we hear these like Ms. Davis and Ms. Williams and Ms. Harris. Do we follow up with those or, or can we? Yes, we do. Actually, they're tracked and um, assigned to the appropriate staff. But yes, we do. Great, great. And, and furthermore, can we look into this red light camera stuff? Um, as you know, we had the email going back and forth, and then the, uh, this is interesting what was passed out to us regarding the uh, delinquency and so forth. Um, I don't know the best way of moving forward with that, but would, we need to look into that, because if we have to link with taxes, that's uh, concerning. Actually, um, I can speak to, to both. Okay. Uh, first, with the red light camera, I've asked um, Assistant City Manager Elton Daniels to work with um, the City Attorney's Office he and his um, staff will be able to um, look further into the red light camera programs, both for the city of Beville as well as for Greenville. Uh, it's quite likely, I know for sure, it will require some enabling legislation for that to happen. Um, some of the challenges that we have, of course, is that we'll be dealing with two school districts as opposed to one, because they do have red lights in both uh, both counties. Uh, so um, we're hoping though that we can uh, perhaps have a discussion with the City Council. Uh, I won't say we'll be ready by the time for the retreat, but maybe in April. Um, the legislature of course co goes back into session. I'm not so sure we'll be prepared for that, but I think we can give you some direction about what it would take to institute a program like that. Um, the city most likely would have to uh, front the money uh, for a contract. Uh, those other two jurisdictions do have uh, contracted service. They're not uh, necessarily running the program themselves, and that certainly would be one of my recommendations is that it's contracted. I actually was deputy city manager in Fayetteville when that program came, came back. Uh, so then on the second um, piece of information which goes really hand in hand with um, a discussion I'm sure we'll have this, uh, this evening about the demolition recommendations and um, I've asked uh, Assistant City Manager uh, Natasha Hampton and her staff along with um, 
Cynthia. Uh, I'm new community business development director. We'll get her feet uh, wet really quickly here uh, to help us uh, look at establishing a program with that working along with um, the finance department because a large part of that is about collection. And when we come back to you with um, third party agreements about how to collect uh, funds that are still due to the city, um, hopefully we'll be able to take those funds and put towards a program that's a bit more aggressive. My only um, other concern would be whether or not we can actually land bank here in North Carolina. Uh, so we'll get some information about that. Uh, it's one thing to foreclose and, and gain ownership of the properties, but if you don't have something to do with the property or the system to push that property on through, then we become the, the landlord. So we'll want to be able to look at it in a more holistic, uh, holistic way. And I just would like to join in and appreciate uh, Ms. Copeland for her research and, um, and just also state that it's not just about foreclosure, it's definitely about code enforcement and recognition that um, we've come out of a deep recession and some of the owners of these properties um, have been struggling as well. But there are some people who have pockets deep enough to deal with these hmm. things. And one of the concerns that I had, which is why I made the recommendation a couple of years ago, um, or maybe a year or so ago, about putting a hold on demolishing properties, because while we do have historic districts uh, that have been designated, there have also been areas of our city that have been completely overlooked in inventory and properties that are historic. Some of the oldest properties in Rocky Mount are located in Crosstown, um, neighborhoods that are generally known as Holly Street or the neighborhood, and none of them have been inventoried for um, historic designation. And my concern is that they've been neglected so long that they are now in danger of being demolished without understanding the great history uh, that we uphold here in Rocky Mount. And um, to just go and raise buildings because they look bad and not look for opportunities to be creative and engaging our citizens that might be interested in uh, working together to rebuild communities back in an appropriate manner that invites new people in and keeps people who are already there, I think it's a loss to all of us and we'll be repeating mistakes that many cities around the country have already made. Um, but I really appreciate um, the, um, the energy uh, that Ms. Copeland has brought to this and I like the idea of engaging um, strategies that perhaps no one has implemented before. I think that's the way that we, that's the standard that Rocky Mountain's always um, been on the cutting edge. So I appreciate the, the look, and if we can do that with our volunteers from our community, I know with our great staff that we have here, we can produce information. Um, we have asked for detailed information to come back to us in a number of manner, in a, in a deep way. So I would expect that we would have um, information presented to us that presents facts, pictures of repeat offenders, who those individuals or organizations are, and then strategies to either work with them to hurry up and get those properties brought, brought back into order, or other ways to get them out of those hands. If people can't fix the properties up, there are plenty of folks who would love a chance to um, take an old property and make it work again. And that's, that was the spirit of um, why I was requesting that we slow down on this de uh, demolition process until we really understand what the priorities have been in, in, in path and creating pathways for demolition. So I, I'm all for saving this whatever we can as quickly as we can and looking for mitigating strategies to keep other neighborhoods from moving into a decline so that we keep our city looking right. Thank you, Councilman. Are there any other comments related to the public comment portion? Dodds many times made the comment that if we want the buildings not to wind up being demolished, we have to take care of them day by day, year in and year out. You can't, if you see the pictures of these properties that are proposed for demolition, there, there's no possibility of doing anything else. The time for concern and action is when they begin to deteriorate. I've said that before, I'm changing it. One quick. For the city manager, um, here's their neighborhood president and secretary in the 
um, audience today and they asked me at our last meeting to update on the two commercial properties on Lincoln Road. I know we started to adopt an ordinance, but I haven't heard any update as of yet, um, the time frame that they would be demolished. So let's keep in mind while we were tearing down houses, there are some commercial buildings that really needs to be gone in residential areas as well. Thank you. Thank you. If your staff can get with Ms. Cutler and Ms. Evans, raise your hand. Get Ms. Jones or Ms. Tasha, uh, Natasha Hampton, uh, your member. Thank you. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to move on to item 9, which is the consent agenda. Uh, item A is consideration of the following tax releases and or refunds. Schedule A, the report of taxes under $100 approved for release and or refund by the city manager. And Schedule B, report of taxes over $100 recommended for release and or refund by the city council. Uh, item B is consideration of temporary street closing requests from Halo Hands Foundation to close Beeman Street, the block between Raleigh Boulevard and New Street from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. on Saturday, April 11th, 2020, for a Family Appreciation Day. And then item C is consideration of the following applications for the renewal of existing taxi rights. Mabel R. Page, Rocky Mount Cab Company, number five. Uh, Kendrick P. Scott, Rocky Mountain Cab Company, number 25. Recommended action is to approve the consent agenda, inclusive of tax releases, temporary street closing, and taxi right renewals. So moved. Moved by uh, Councilperson uh, Miller. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Blackwell. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, item number 10 has enough complexity that I believe that um, our city attorney is going to speak to a few items on this matter. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have handed out a, some changes in the authorizing resolution that was in your uh, packet for this meeting. Uh, the change is to add the mayor so that it reads that the mayor and the city manager or either of them is authorized to sign the document the grant. Now this resolution is not appropriating the money to set the city's match, but it's authorizing the uh, for the city to make the application. The, the payment will come later and it is as is reflected in the change in the bottom of the second page distributed on the memorandum, the last sentence, the city's share will be uh, $7,500, but it will not be appropriated until, until there is a notice and a public hearing help. Any questions related to the attorney at the side? All right, item 10 then is uh, consideration of the resolution authorizing submission of the application for the building for reuse program funding, just $300,000, for the North Carolina Department of Commerce to assist Armor Rock LLC with building improvements and modifications at 133 Blue Hawaiian Drive. It approves a ranging of 5% cash match, which equals $15,000, of which the city share is $7,500. It verifies the city has or will comply with the state and local laws, provides authority for the manager and mayor to execute additional documents pertaining to grant application. Um, recommended action is to authorize the mayor to execute grant application on behalf of the city, and two, to adopt the resolution which authorizes the city share of cash match of $7,500 and for the manager to sign additional documents pertaining to the grant. So moved. So moved by Councilman Second. Miller, seconded by um, Blackwell. All in favor, please say aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, item 11 is consideration of the ordinance ordering this community code inspector to proceed with demolition of the following dilapidated dwellings. A, 502 Clyde Street. B, 1229 Hill Street. C, 1014 Arlington Street. D, 811 Clark Street. C, 200 South Howell Street. Uh, the recommended action is to adopt the ordinances. Is there a need for discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. 
All right, Councilman Walker. I was contacted by a developer that the 200 South Howell Street property uh, should be uh, demolished, but the other properties um, uh, have an opportunity to be redeemed, especially with some of the uh, process going on with the counties. Um, so I would like to make a motion to uh, table this item uh, until our next meeting. Okay, there's a motion to the table. Need a second? Second. Second by Blackwell. Motion, uh, item has been tabled then. All, all in favor, please say aye. <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Gary. So does that include the item, uh, the 200 South Hall Street, to walk with that? I believe you said did need to be demolished. Yes, ma'am, that one can be demolished. But I already know. As I understood the motion, we, we tabled everything on item 11. Uh, I suppose we could attach some. Uh, Jeff? Yes. I mean, you, could there be another motion you, made? You yes. just said to the next Okay, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that um, we demolish 200 South Howell Street. Motion to uh, demolish 200 South Howell Street. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. All opposed? Set the same sign. I think the ayes have it. All right. Item 12 is consideration of proposal from Martin Stearns and Associates to perform the city's audit for fiscal year 2020, the 14th year of service, $56,500. As a $1,500 increase from the prior year. Uh, recommended action is to award the contract to Martin Starnes, Martin Starnes and Associates to authorize the mayor and director of finance to execute the same on behalf of the city. So moved. Moved by Councilman Miller. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mike or Joyner. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 13 is a consideration of submission of a 2020 online pre-application to the North Carolina Recreational Trails Program to provide funding for multi-use natural surface trail within Battle Park. It's a $100,000 minimum 25% local match required, which is $25,000. The recommended action is to authorize online submission of the pre-application by staff, approve local match, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute required documentation and certifications, including subsequent grant application and agreement. Is there any for discussion? Question. <coughs> the um, material, this um, natural material for the, the walk is what kind of material? I don't know the specifics about it, but it is, um, it's not asphalt for sure, but it is supposed to be a natural um, path. Okay, and the second question then, this path would need the trail, whatever, and tell the length of it would need to be uh, installed no matter what the planning comes out of with regard to Battle Park. Yes, ma'am. I think uh, what we're talking about is um, being able to give people even greater access uh, to, to the park and to enjoy it, but also to be environmentally sensitive uh, to, to the path, as you've mentioned. Okay, and so the greater access that would be made available by this additional trail will not further impede the natural nature of that farm. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you have a motion? So moved. All right. Blackwell. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second by Joyner. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 14 is consideration of offer from Olga Corral $3,000 for the purchase of 1110 Sycamore Street. Recommended action is to adopt the resolution of intent to accept offer to purchase, which authorizes the city clerk to advertise an offer for upset bids pursuant to general statute 168 269. So moved. So moved by Blackwell. Is there a second? Second by Walker. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 15 is consideration of the municipal agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation 
uh, for adjustment and relocation of city-owned water infrastructure necessary for the North Carolina for North Old Carriage Road widening. The city is responsible for reimbursing the North Carolina Department of Transportation $767,867.94, which is 50% of the construction costs. Recommended action is to approve the agreement, authorize the mayor, city clerk, and finance director to execute the same on behalf of the city. Is there a need for discussion? I move for approval. Uh, Councilman, and second, made by Joyner. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Item 16 is consideration of the following bids uh, A, electric transformer. I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> Let's just go with electronic electric transformer award to the next year power solutions at a total cost of $138,029.08. B. Train station cooling tower replacement award to Eastbound Mechanical LLC at a total cost of $207,048, which includes base bid plus alternates. C. Uh, residential gas meters award to Elster American Meter Company LLC at an estimated cost of $112,150. That includes 1,250 gas meters at $89.72 each. Purchase proposed to be made in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-129E6. Bidder approved a sole source provider based on standardization or compatibility. D, pouring rights to award to Pepsi Bottling Ventures LLC and at a total annual cost of $69,346, Parks and Recreation, $29,512, the Event Center, $39,834, a three-year contract with option to renew for two additional one-year terms, and an estimated five-year contract amount equaling $346,730. The Pepsi Bottling Ventures LLC has proposed monetary sponsorships to Parks and Recreation at $40,000 and the Event Center at $100,000 over a five-year term. Recommended action is to award bids as recommended, authorize the purchasing division to issue purchase orders and execute bid documents for A and C in accordance with the Council's award, and three, to authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to execute bid contracts for B and D on behalf of the City. Is there a need for discussion? Mr. Mayor, I've got questions regarding pouring rights. Very well. Councilman Caltridge. Um, I guess my questions come in, one, about the rebates that are listed in here, and then also, why would we go to a sponsorship? Why don't we, why don't we just um, reduce the total amount of the cost by $140,000 for the two entities involved, as opposed to... Um, having a five-year sponsorship because that would be a reduction of $28,000 per year. Um, you know, this is new to me. I don't, I'm not in the industry that does this, but, it, you know, the, the sponsorships don't sit well with me. The rebates, I need better understanding because it, do we have a metric and how we're going to keep up with the metric regarding the rebates once we hit a certain level? I'll have to ask uh, the finance director to uh, respond as she can, or we can get you know further information for you. But this was a bid process, and this was a large responsible bid. There were two bidders, um, Pepsi and Coca-Cola. And uh, as far as the sponsorship goes, I suspect that they want to provide a community service as well, even after winning the um, award, they still want to be um, good stewards, if you will, within the community. So this isn't unusual uh, at all. Uh, it's just that it comes in the form of a sponsorship where they can hang their banner uh, at our facilities. And for that, you know, we, we also capitalize from um, their contributions. So it's not out of the ordinary, but I don't know uh, Amy, if you have anything else to uh, add to that. Uh, 
I'll agree that as, as part of these kind of bids, this is normal and pouring rights to have the sponsorship a piece of it, as well as the rebates. And city manager is correct. I mean, the sponsorship is going to cover their name brand being in our centers or out at our sports complex. So, you know, people come in, that's marketing for them, and that's, that's value. So it, it was and it, it part of the RFP for them to bring incentives. And so each of them did. And even in our prior contract, there were incentives as well. The rebates are separate. You didn't see it in the detail that you have here, but we've estimated the value of those rebates into the contract as well. The actual rebate, they, they were about the same. There was very little difference between Pepsi and Coke and the rebates, but all in between the sponsorships, the cost of the product, and the rebates, it was still clear that the lowest bidder was Pepsi. How, how are we going to monitor the rebates? I was saying if we get a certain level, we purchase a certain level, we get one rebate, and if we go to another level, we get an extra rebate. How are we going to monitor that? We can monitor that based on the invoices. I mean, some of it's based on the product that you buy, and the rebates can vary based on the type of product that you buy. So we'll, before we pay invoices, we should see our rebates as part of that. All right, just from my industry, just experience has taught me the more complicated they make these things, the uh, more room for um, movement in there there is. And that's what concerns me. So, so uh, Mr. Mayor, may I speak? May I speak? Good, yes, sir. Um, I recall when we were developing um, the approach, the marketing approach um, with the event center, that we knew we were entering into a new arena for Rocky Mount. And it seems that after we had um, completed our contract and were working on building the facility, we had a very early question about how we needed to market and brand Rocky Mount and be able to participate in a huge industry in sports marketing. And I thought that we had conversations around setting goals for um, just this type of thing with recruiting dollars from uh, companies for to support our bottom line efforts to take some of the ease off of operational costs and to look at ways to get industries uh, committed and excited about being <coughs> part of the event center. And we also asked for a connection, a formal connection, in our marketing strategies and our fundraising strategies to tie together parts and rec opportunities with the event center as well. So I was excited to see this because I thought this was the first time we actually did it. You know, when we had a, a, a beginning point that we were beginning to see value come back from internationally respected companies. You know, we watch, everybody watch sporting events, whether you watch racing or wrestling or <clears throat> football or baseball or basketball, you see banners and logos, you know, everywhere with these major entities. And I'm happy, for one, <laughs> to see Pepsi saying that they value Rocky Mountain so much that they want to put their banner up and they're willing to pay for it. So I'm happy about it. And I'd like to make a motion that we adopt it. <laughs> I'll second your motion, but I have a question. Uh, the well, first of all, I just want to this. I've got uh, I believe had the floor in terms of the questions. No, you've got you've got a motion. Oh, yeah, the motion. Okay. The scholarships. Those are the scholarships that I think is in human relation, far as uh, summer youth program. Is that correct? that we offer a scholarship for uh, those uh, young people who cannot afford to participate in some of the programming uh, with Parks and Rec. Is that correct, Mr. Archie General? Correct. That's correct. So I'm glad to see that 40000 maybe it could be a little bit more than 40000 but um, this, the citizens do appreciate that because we have a lot of youth who parents are not able uh, to pay the fees for some of our programs and um, they can be awarded scholarship if they are referred to um, human relations. So I, I appreciate the point rights, the banner, and the um,
scholarship, and I'd just like to see that number grow even higher. Appreciate that. Thank you. Before I call for a vote, I'm just going to say that a number of business ventures that I've had the opportunity to negotiate board rights, this is not inconsistent with what you would see in the language. Although I have to admit and understand your position, it feels a little squishy. But uh, but the reality of my experience is that this is how that is to work. Um, is there any additional discussion that we have on the floor? Yes, I'd like to say if those of you that didn't go to the event center this weekend, if you had to stop by there, the event center was definitely in Rocky Mount from uh, our motels to our eateries, but definitely full for at least three days complete because of the event center doing a great job. And I had the privilege to stop by and see that. And, and really proud of the staff and what David Jordan and the staff are doing at the event center. I would, yes, for clarification, my concern with the sponsorships really was why don't we just reduce the cost? And I understand that the sponsorships, they get their names up there and everything. And, and I think that I'm confused now with what Councilman Knight was discussing about scholarships. There, isn't there a deviation between scholarships and sponsorship, or are they the same thing? I don't know monetary sponsorship to Parks and Rec. So I guess it's the terminology. Well, I just didn't know if they were talking about putting just their Pepsi logo up there. I don't know that's a question for staff. I just asked that question, and then Art just said correct. So the correct or not. <laughs> 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 we got money to do something with. Right. <laughs> so let's leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I think that's the one job I have. Forty years. Yeah. <laughs> Please say aye. aye. All opposed, by like sign. Motion passes. Okay. Item 17 goes over uh, various vacancies and appointment positions that we have. Are there any appointments or nominations? We such? do have an appointment. And it's not based upon what Ms. Wilkins said. Podium. Decision of the NAACP in Rocket Mount, who voted on Cooper Blackwell as being Definitive or in relation. So I'm just here to tell you, be on your P's and Q's when it comes to race relations and any other relations in this city. He's a smart, intelligent, and he's very conscious of what's going on in this country, in this state, and in this city. So be ready for a serious dialogue and be ready to act upon or whatever he brings to the board along with other members. I just want to thank Mr. Danson. It was not your fault that you were singled out because of your address. I can help it. Because when the memo came to the NAACP, like any other organization, it says you have a representation from your organization, not mentioning that they have to be a citizen of Rocket Mount, but they just have to be a member of the organization, just like the chamber, just like the rotary, just like anything else. And so I just wanted to clear that up. And, I, and the clerk and I and the manager, we are clear on that. So I just want to thank you and appreciate you for your uh, bringing truth to power to this board. And I know you're not going to stop there. Definitely you're not. Gonna be even. Uh, I mean, two of us now. Two of us, yeah, two, hopefully three. So I just thank you for all the uh, what you've done, and we welcome. Uh, Cooper Blackwell, the fifth, is that correct? That's correct. The fifth to the Human Relations Board. Thank you. Councilman Knight, are there any other uh, appointments or nominations? Well, I just want to make clarification on the planning board, which I served on for many years. Um, each ward has a representative on the planning board, in addition to Edgecombe and Nash County. And but the, the difference is, the Edgecombe and Nash County representatives, if, if there are any, are not allowed to vote on anything that resides within this, in the city, only in the um, extraterrestrial, whatever, I forgot what it's referred to. TJ. TJ. Um, so, um, just want to make that clarification there. Okay, thank you. With that, we'll move on to yes, uh, Ms. Darlene Spencer for the committee, uh, Community Appeals Board.
Okay. Um, so do I have a motion contingent upon uh, receipt of personal information forms uh, for Ms. Uh, Spencer? Yes. Yes. Is there a second? So moved. Second. Sorry. Second for about Councilman Knight and your exuberance tonight. Please <laughs> 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 dress it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Any other uh, nominations or appointments? Okay, that being said, we'll move on to item 17A, um, which is not only everybody's agenda, it's something that was added, I believe, for the last minute. But it's the consideration of the scheduled annual city uh, council retreat scheduled for March 25th through 27th, 2020 in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, that was added at last minute. But we, this is our last meeting to be able to uh, make a resolution to this. Uh, what were those dates again, please? Uh, March 25th through the 27th of 2020 for the uh, retreat to be held in Durham, North Carolina. So move. Move up, Mike Bell. No, not a joint. Second about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <it is. laughs> I didn't know you was asking for a vote. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. To be determined. To be determined. All right. Well, well we'll give um, due notice to where it is and the time times for um, each of the dates. Well, as far as we know, we hope in Durham, correct? Yes. Well, yes. Correct. Uh -huh. We have uh, two other items. The next item is consideration of ordinance approving a temporary street closing uh, ordinance adopting requirement of North Carolina Department of uh, Transportation standards for the St. Patrick's Day bar crawl. And that's a request for a temporary closure on Tarboro Street in downtown area on Saturday, March 14th, 2020 from 3 p.m. until 10, 10 p.m. Uh, if there's no discussion, I'd like a motion. So moved. So moved by Miller, second by Daltridge. All in favor, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Uh, and then finally, uh, Councilman Walker uh, has an item that he would like to uh, address uh, the group with. Uh, Nash County Special Olympics. Uh, Council Member presented me with this card on Valentine's Day to uh, show their love, and they wanted me to make sure that I show the council, uh, Madam Manager, Mayor, and also to the citizens that were here for uh, tonight's council meeting. So if we could all just give them a hand for their work. If you get a moment, just follow them on Facebook, Nash County Special Olympics, and you can uh, be able to be a part of everything they have going on at South Rocky Mountain Community Center. Thank you. Is there any uh, new business that we need to consider? Not, I'll take a motion to uh, adjourn. No, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, you just have on your dais um, for information in response to uh, a request from the council member. Right. No, no action. Okay, so I have a, a motion from somebody. <laughs> Joiner. <laughs> yeah. I have a second from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice. Uh, All in favor, say aye. Aye. All those like sign. Thank you.